Okay, well that ends uh, that part of uh, the panel discussion. We'll now throw it over to the floor for your thoughts. We've heard uh, some extraordinary uh, wide-ranging um, issues this morning, uh, some very interesting topics. Um, we have a number of uh, people who are dying to ask questions. Could I ask you just to say your name, uh, say where you're from, and uh, direct your question to uh, the panel member. The gentleman in the front here. Can we get a microphone down here, please? It's the risk 
that we might have for developing the new energy resources or discovery of new resources. One example, the last year, there have been a discovery of what you call shale gas. And it seems that gas is going to be as much as a conventional reserve. And this will have a lot of implications on Qatar and other countries. So really, all that I'm saying, we should not be complacent about diversification, and we should make sure that within short time, we took all the advantages we got now in order to diversify and reach what we call uh, uh, economic uh, sustainability. Okay, okay. Uh, John, do you want to just jump in on that? Only to say, time, one should be careful. I mean, we are talking about investment choices here, and investment choices need to be subjected to some very rigorous criteria. Because at the end of the day, what one has to decide as a society is what are we willing to pay for diversification? How many resources are we going to use, and what benefits do we get from that? So for those economies that have I know, I know. possibly a depletion pressing very hard against them, one can, in a sense, make an argument for somewhat less care and attention to the details. For those economies that are less pressed, one should argue for a very careful approach to this, I think, simply because ultimately everyone faces the need to diversify, and to do so at least cost, I think, is the objective of the good public policy. John, thank you. Can we get a microphone from the gentleman over here on the right hand side? Yes, my name is Brent Dark. I work with the uh, GSDP. A number of panelists have mentioned uh, the incentive structure within the diversification process. Um, I'm just wondering what comes first. Is it high value added activities and then high wages? Or is it high wages and then a graduate, graduation to high value or high, high, high value uh, activities? Thank you. Um, we have this problem in this you know, um, We have created so much economic diversification, we have created so much exports, but the net regulation can be small, particularly manufacturing electronics. Um, our exports of electronics manufacturing, the local debt is just about 15%. So when you compare in terms of cost benefit analysis vis a vis the, uh, the incentives we give, I think we, uh, you know, it can be uneconomical. It can be. So I think the idea you know, is to create so very, very great wealth great in terms of value addition that will allow wages to rise. I think the sequencing would be, I think so, you know, and so we're facing now because uh, the pressure on wages and environment, we've got to create the, uh, the wealth. Um, so the instrumentation to create wealth is to create the value addition within our industry structure. That's my quick response to your question. Thank you. Well, in the GCC countries, most of the uh, initial industries are owned by the government. And if you want to to, avoid, to diversify, you have to start with the privatizing the government monopolies. Those are the areas where I believe that the local market would benefit from, and they will be able to operate inside the country. Secondly, once you finish the stage, then the next stage will be be able to scan for opportunities. It is the market who define what you want to, 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 to produce and deliver. We don't, shouldn't be building the product before knowing what the demand for the market. And hence, it is not the value or, uh, 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 added or the incremental value for each of these uh, industries. It's actually what is the market for it in the, in the international arena and how you can be able to reach it through your uh, marketing, uh, uh, you know, grid. Thank you. Okay, 